Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be trying out a new uh, release from Spellbinders. Uh, it is part of Susan's Tropical Getaway uh, collection. They did some of these items free of charge for my review, and of course all opinions are my own. And any links in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. I love a die set for flowers that's like this. <laughs> it's going to be lovely. There's just some large pieces we're going to work with. We have the stamens. It's going to make a really nice uh, flower for us. This is the hibiscus. Um, you know I have hibiscus in the... Well, it's actually my neighbor's hibiscus, but it's very pretty. It's between our homes. Big, huge bushes. I have some little smaller ones I keep in pots right here in front, and they're just gorgeous. I mean, at the park here, just a block away, they have like the double hybrid type. Like, just triple hybrid. They have the regular ones. They're just so gorgeous. They come in an array of colors, and you know, they're just so beautiful to look at. And um, so I was really happy to select this one to try out. So we will try that out today. But I also want to share a couple other things. So um, I picked this up recently. It's the Card Shop Essentials for the Susan's. I know it's freaking out my camera. Sorry, guys. Susan's Garden Specialty Cardstock. It is 10 sheets of 80-pound paper. And we'll look at this a little closer. But when I first looked at it, and you can see that grain on there, I was like, that is so interesting. Like, honestly, I just thought, oh, okay, it's a little different type of paper that you make the flowers with, so I want to try it out. But I didn't know it had, like, this kind of look to it. And it says, you know, um, yeah, the Susan chose this car stuff for its texture. It is also ideal for adding color with inks, alcohol, uh, markers, and pastels. Can handle being molded and shaped with Susan's tools for creating beautiful, realistic flowers. Now, having said that... I have her tool set here that Spellbinders had uh, graciously sent here. Um, you know, um, in the past videos I've always kind of just used little tools, whatever I have, even sometimes like the back of a tool like this to shape things or some other, you know, whatever I might have that goes on the tool in one, the other little pieces that I have that implements and things. But this one is specific to flower forming, so let's check it out. This is the Susan's Garden Ultimate Toolkit, and as you can see on the front here there are some different tools and some different heads here. It says these are all created with paper, of course. 15 piece toolkit. So let's open this up. On the back it shows you everything and a little bit, a little info about each piece. I have been looking forward to these right here. The short and long loop tools. Whenever I see Susan use them on her videos, I'm like, oh, I need to try those out. So let's open this up and see about them. Because they just add so much texture so quickly whenever she uses that specific tool. So we have the tool in one looking good and to be honest my other one look at her she's awesome this i think i got when spellwinders first came out with it um she is you know looks a little a little ratty so i think what i'll do is replace her with this beautiful gold one that'll be right here and um again with the tool one all you do is kind of move these guys down and it hooks on the different heads and it should have yeah, a space for you to put some of the heads in here to store and what i would do with that is probably put the heads you use the most often it opens on both sides, but I believe that's just to still store one set. I don't know that you can really put another one um, back to back, you know what I'm saying? So either way, they both open on either side. And then these are the different heads for this one. So again, lots of flower forming tools. I love this little pouch. <laughs> Very cute. Um, and here we are again. We can talk a little bit about what each of these tools does. I'm not sure from the back it says exactly, but like I said, these guys are the MVP right here. <laughs> so these, um, uh, it says two sizes are used with a foam molding mat to shape and add striations to individual petals for the flowers. Then we have the leaf tool. Yes, this one here is the leaf tool. And it helps you make realistic vein and stem. So as you can see, it's a little bit pointy. So you can use it in different ways to kind of scratch at that or just to make the lines that you would like. Um, and then these are the styluses, of course, to add dimension and petals, to petals, sorry, and cupping flower layers. Of course, there's a larger one, a mid-sized one, and a little guy. And you might be wondering if these are the same, like, that you could get for the two-in-one, because I know they have other heads. I believe this one's bigger than the ones that come with the other sets, and I've reviewed the other sets before. And they do have some smaller ones like this, but for sure that one's different. And they are kind of different in the way they're shaped. It's not a perfect ball, so hopefully... You can see the difference there. Um, so we have that and those and this guy. And yeah, so these guys, it's just as you pull through your petals, like it just gives a lot of texture really quick. So I've been really looking forward to using those. So we'll try them out. I'm, I think I can try them out with today's flower. Of course, you can do whatever you want with your flowers, however much texture or less texture or <laughs> whatever you like to do, of course. Okay, so we have the reverse tweezer, I believe. 
Oh, let me make sure I can get that off there. And the reason it's called reverse is as you pinch it, it opens, right? And then when you release, it grabs. So it takes a little getting used to, but there's that beautiful thing. The gold, again, kind of color. We have the little scissors. Really great for your little snips and things. Of course, we need scissors for lots of things. I think a lot of times what Susan does is she'll cut down her little stamens a little bit more with those. This one isn't created that way. You can just uh, add dimension to these with um, the pollen and stuff like that. But sometimes she'll just snip them more just depending on what flowery what you're doing. And then we have just a more of a precision tip tweezer. These are also great for perler beads. <laughs> Let's see, ask me how I know. My kids love to borrow my uh, tweezers that are like that. They work really well. And then it comes with a little pouch so you can store everything in your pouch. And then I did not realize this. It has these pieces. Let me see what this says. We have a nonstick sheet. Yeah, I see that right there. And then a foaming, a foam folding mat and a leaf pad. Interesting. Use a leaf tool to create stem line and veins or leaves. So look at this. A little piece of like the craft mat. That is so cool because a lot of times what we're doing with these guys, either you're coloring with Copic or you're inking them. So it gets a little messy, but you have a little mat to work on and then just put it away, you know, very easy. And then a little foam and then the leaf uh, mat, like it said. So I'm going to put these in here for now. Oh my goodness. Keep all these goodies. Okay. So let me uh, think about what I want to do and we will just get to it. Okay, so to begin, I think I'm going to run uh, my leaves through paper that's already green. We'll kind of play with that a little bit, but I'm just going to run those through maybe a couple times. I'm not sure how many leaves I want to use on this project. And then I'm going to cut these guys out. For each flower, you just need one and one. And what's really nice is on her dies, she'll tell you that <laughs> one time, right? So you just need one and one and one of your stamen... I think they're called stamens, pistol, filament. I don't know. I call them all stamens, okay? The middle part of your flower. We need one of those two. So I think those three I will cut from this, uh, the Susan Garden specialty cardstock. I might change my mind on this one, but either way, when I come back, it'll be that these three are cut out of this, or maybe I'll use a colored paper for this one just to start it off. But these guys, we're going to use um, alcoholic markers to color them. So I'll run those through, and I'll be right back. So I have my pieces. This paper is really interesting. It feels kind of like a wallpaper sample. You know how you have wallpaper? It has like a texture. Really cool. Okay, so I'm curious to try that. I did cut this out of just some yellow paper because... I'm not going to take the time to color this little guy yellow, especially because they're kind of thin. I don't want to mess with it too much. And then I have some leaves, so we'll do those in just a minute. So let's bring out our little craft mat to do some coloring. Um, so I'm going to pattern this after the flowers that I have. Not my neighbor's flowers, <laughs> my own. <laughs> so uh, they're really kind of pink, almost fuchsia in the center, but I'm going to go with this red. I'm not sure if I'm going to use the dark and then going into yellow, because that's how mine are. They're kind of like a pinky red going into yellow. I don't know how to explain it. But um, let's start with like this guy in the very center. And I'm going to do that one. And then I'll, I guess I'll go into this lighter one. And I'll, let's try it. These are just two different kinds of red. And I'm not, I'm just kind of messing with it. And then they go into yellow like right away. So I'm going to take my yellow. Oh, not that side. It'll take a long time. Just bring that in here. Just kind of play with that a little bit, bring the, that deep color out towards the yellow. So I am going back and forth a lot, but I'm kind of picking up my pen also some more that I'm dragging this color out. Okay, so you can see some of that yellow or the reddish is kind of getting into this area. Wow, this paper really takes the color really well. Like, I don't normally try to blend it, but it's just kind of doing that <laughs> on its own, which is really nice. Okay. And on the back side, we can also dip it in the same color, but since it's already there, and I'm just going to give it a little hint of color. I'm just going to use the same yellow and not even try with the others. That's really good stuff. I am very aware that I have a lot of marker juice <laughs> on my mat, so I'm trying to not get it too much on the red in this area. Okay, I'll do this one the same way. Just these two little spots. I'll start with a dark red going into that lighter and then out. Okay, okay. Right so I, again, I still have a little color here. Actually, I'm not even going to clean up yet. What I'm going to do is bring this guy in and then color the bottom of him the dark red. 
just to get a little variation of color. I suppose if I wanted to come in with that yellow one and kind of blend it a little bit, we can do that too. I'm going to color on both sides. This is just a scrap of paper that I had. You know, but I'm saying if I wanted to bring that yellow to kind of mess with it a little bit, we could do that too. Ah! <laughs> I love the way the paper, honestly, usually I try to like do fun things because they're leaves or flowers or whatever. You kind of try to do adding a little, a little more texture, a little something. But look how it took the marker and look at the little like dip, 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 pitting in there. I love it. Oh my gosh. So pretty. Okay. Um, I know there's a couple things. Um, like Susan had put the pollen, which we'll do, and um, some Nuvo drops. I'm not going to put the Nuvo drops until I'm done, I think. So I'm going to leave that for now. We're going to just put these aside. I'm just prepping these things so that we're good to go. So the next thing with the leaves, I'm just going to add some green ink on them. It's closest to me here. I have this. Okay, and this. And I should grab some green ink. Uh, let's see. Looking for like mowed lawn because it's very dark. Yeah, here we go. And so for these guys, I'm just going to take the ink and go around the edges. Now you can leave it down, but I'm just going to do this. So that's what I'm saying. You're still going to get a little variation of color if you, even if you start with green, just add more green. There is one thing that I think Susan likes to do is with this guy. But um. I'll come back when we go to shape our leaves to finish it off. So I'll leave this out. I do want to put some shape on it and then maybe do a little more inking. But for now, we're just going to go around the edges to add a little texture. Okay, I'll do the same thing front and back on all so of them. here are our pieces. Move these guys over. Not quite in need of that one yet. I think the first one we're going to use here is like the small tool. So again, when you pull this down, you can see there's like a little ball bearing in there and you just line these little guys up with it however you want to control if you like it further out or more in however it is that you want to do that and we'll take this little guy out and we'll shape these basically we're going to shake them pretty much the same way um so start at the tip and bring it in and I'm being very gentle because it's the first time I've used this tool so like I don't know how hard I should push but that adds some really nice texture and it's cupping it there I'm going to do it again to each one this time I'm pulling it a little bit harder again this is new paper for me and also a new tool so I just want to see how aggressive we can get <laughs> so here's just pulling from the edge and bring it down in here I'll do the same thing to these guys but I know the next thing Susan has shown is to go ahead and hold on to these guys and pinch them oh and actually, maybe I should do it with this one. <laughs> just hold on to it there and pinch it up like this. And then with this guy, we're just going to roll the very tips back a little bit. Hopefully I'm still in frame. Sorry, guys. Sometimes when I have things like this, I want to see it myself. <laughs> and I'm looking at it or getting it close to my face, but then it's out of frame. Just a little bit. Okay, I'll do the same thing with these other guys. Pinching that and then rolling this out. Again, however you like to make flowers, if you want to wet the paper, you like that kind of look. It's crunchy when you're done. However it is. But I will do the same thing with these other two. And I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So, finish that guy up. The same kind of... Yeah. Technique as we did on the first one there. So I'm going to put this to the side for just a second. Put this to the side for a second. Um, I'm going to work on the uh, stamen just to get it going. So I have this um, flower pollen. And you know what? I just decided I'm going to put in this little recycled takeout container. Because every time I use this, I either dip into it or however, or I pour it back. But you know what? If we just have it in here to begin with, I can still dip into it or pour it however as I want to use it. So I'm going to put that to the side. That one is like a sunflower color. And we're going to put it on this little guy. So I'm going to take this for now. And, you know, I, you can just hold it with the tweezer. You can use a quilling tool, however you want. All we're going to do is roll this guy up. I'm going to train it just a little bit, but we are going to put some glue also. So I'm going to undo that. 
What's nice about these reverse tweezers or however is that I can just hold on to it. I'm not doing anything, so it's holding it for you. And that's, you know, the difference with that. Um, of course, you can do whatever you like. Use the other ones, but you're going to have to pinch it, right, while you're holding it this whole time. But right now, I'm just not doing anything. Put it down, and it's still holding it, which is nice. I'm trying to think where I need to put the glue. On the inside. Okay, so like just in here. This guy ready? Come on. There we go. So just gonna bring this around. I'm gonna hold it there for a little bit just to make sure. And then these little guys. So I think what Susan had said the difference between like this top part and this bottom or however is that in this area you're gonna have pollen but up here you're gonna have like little drops and that's they're so cool <laughs> when you look at the uh, hibiscus like in real life like close up they just look like little I don't know how to explain it because I guess maybe they're almost like cupped I don't know because it's almost like an optical illusion what you're seeing at the tip here so it's kind of like pinkish kind of red it just depends what you're looking at yellowy I don't know so I'm just gonna put some of this stuff well, not this stuff, but some glue on here, and then I'll put... So I'm just putting on the tip and then um, of these guys. And I'm going to put some on the inside, too, just because I don't know what's actually going to be visible. And then I'm going to dip it in here to get some of the pollen, right? <laughs> That's actually much better to have it in a little tub like that. Yeah, a little bit more in this area. Okay, I can pull this out and that's done. And on here we're going to add a little bit of Nouveau Drops, so we don't need to do that. But now we have a little bit of that. Again, if you don't have this, you know, little pollen stuff, don't don't use it. <laughs> Just leave it alone, it looks nice anyway. Um, I'm going to put this over to the side for a moment. Maybe just here so it can dry. And let me bring our leaves back so we can shape those guys and have them ready. So for our leaves, I'm going to use this. I've never used one of these before. It's her little pad. It seems like just a really, really sturdy, almost chipboard kind of material. And we're going to use this guy. We're going to use this tool. So again, whatever tools I think you use most often, I would have them loaded up, ready to go. This one goes all the way in, as you can see. So we're just going to load that up. Let me click, ready to go. And so we're going to turn it over. So I colored this side. This is the opposite side. And just gouging down like this, right? Down into it. Or back like this. I think back like this might be better for now because I haven't really used this tool before. So I want to be a little more gentle in scratching it, right? We can look how pretty. And on this side, it just makes that vein leaf. It looks so nice. Pretty cool. So um, the reason I left my ink out is that way I can get a little color on that area there. And then we can get, again, our tool and just make a lot of little lines. And just kind of close. To, there we go. And then I'll do the same with the other guy, I think. Let me bring this. And I mean, there's so many tools. And again, you can switch this out. You don't have to switch it out. I'm just going to hold on to it. But if I wanted to switch it out, um, yeah, there's lots of ways to play with this. I'm trying to think of what I want to do. I think Susan likes to pinch it this way. That's right. Again, do whatever you like, whatever you think you would want to do, what you think is nice and pretty, or just stumble across. That's always great. It's just kind of cupping the flower and the leaf like that. And I'll do the same thing with all the leaves. I just want to show you as I'm going along, like I did, you know, the same step on all of them where I kind of creased in the back. Now I'm putting the lines on all of them. So everything's done at once and pretty quickly. <laughs> it works up real quick. And so the next thing I'll do with all of them, after I put that to the side, is I'll bring this over. Give it a backward pinch. Turn this guy over. And do this part. And I'll do it with all of them. So that way it's just kind of like um, assembly line, you know. I'm doing the same things on all of them. Now this guy's turn. And the next one works up real quick. Okay, so I believe I'm done with all of that. Other than putting the drops on our other little guy. So I'm going to put these things away. Clean that off. And for now, I still might need the other tools in a minute. So I do have a card base here. What I did is I just grabbed a standard two size card that I always have just ready to go. And then I have this guy. And you know what? Now that I have my ink sitting out, 
I'm going to distress the edges. I don't do that very often. So I just have this piece of paper that has like palms on it cut down to uh, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I'm just going to go around the edges and green up the paper, the edges, and I'll be right back. Okay. So I have that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just adhere that to my card base. And then I believe, I love the color of just like crisp and white, on, especially on a flower like this even with that tropical feel. I believe they also came out with a plumeria, which is very lovely to mix together. Maybe some plumeria and some of these little guys. But what I'm gonna do is take this really pretty Spellbinders die. I'm gonna run it through uh, my machine. I'm also gonna make sure to uh, emboss it, um, whatever machine you have, if you have like a rubber embossing mat or just however you get things to emboss, uh, go ahead and do that because I want this area to really be embossed, right? So I'll run it through and then I'll run it with the embossing mat and I'll be right back. I'm going to show you just real quick, like if you're using a machine like this one, and I don't normally show a lot of die cutting because, you know, it just depends on what machine you have. But I'm going to take this guy with the platform and I go ahead and turn this to face up. Just because, or if you remember the platform, the sandwiches are on there. So I just want to make sure that didn't shift. And now I'm going to put the rubber mat and the embossing platform or plate, I guess, if you will. And as you notice, I put the die face up if you want it to push into the rubber embossing mat. And I did tape this down very well because I didn't want it to move while we were using it, but there it is. So you can see that embossed edge. Okay, so I'm thinking about doing something like this, and what I want to do is just stamp um, from the New Start stamp set. I think I want to do UR One of a Kind. I'm going to put it over to the edge, because what I think I want to do is just build my flower just near that. I think it'll look pretty. So if we had this guy here, and again, this is a circle, but you know, you still want to get it pretty straight. So I think I am going to use a stamping tool to help me with that. So let me set this up on a stamping tool, and I'll be right back. Let me see a stamping tool. I just kind of placed it, but I <laughs> had this kind of help me make sure. It's pretty much straight. I'm lining it up on that guide, on that grid line right there. Sorry, and I'm just going to use some VersaFine ink. Not nice and juicy. Just lovely. All right. I'm going to let that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I think we're ready to put this together. Um, I probably will want this to pop up because, you know, and it's going to have a lot more dimension. Um, but you can lay it flat and then do everything. So I think I'm going to build it up and then I'll put dimension on the back of it. That way this is kind of flat as I work on it. But I will put it in place just so I can kind of see what I'm doing and see where this guy ends up. So let's get this. Cannot forget my little stamen there. So this is our bottom piece. And then when you pop this guy in, just gotta pay attention to where he's kind of at, what's covering up or might be or might not be. Like right there is probably good, right? So I wanna put this guy here. I'm gonna put glue on my surface and then put this little guy there. Oh, you know, one thing I did forget to do is to really push down on these guys. So like, let's see, we had our mat and I'll bring it back just to pinch it and bring it in a little bit more. And I would use the, the round tool I'll just use this one for now. Just push down in on it like this because it'll kind of crunch it up. Just another little something. And basically when you go to put this one on, you're trying to see where the two come together. I think this guy is the one that goes up and then these two kind of come down here. So I'll do that and I could have pinched this guy up too, but for now what we're going to do is just make sure he's kind of collected. And while I'm waiting for that, I might as well go ahead and pop in the second set. And I'm putting the glue here, but you can put the glue on the back of your little item, of course. And again, one of the petals goes in between here, while the other two come out. So pretty. This paper is pretty awesome. <laughs> again, you can manipulate these guys however as you want them to be. And then, and then we're going to place our little center part here. And I'm going to have it kind of going like that way. However it is that you want to form your little flower. If you want it flatter, I would say maybe 
just apply it flat, you know, <laughs> instead of standing up. And I do get questions about how do you send one of these? Um, I hardly, well, I do send cards, but if I'm going to give it to somebody, usually I'm handing it to them, so I don't worry a lot about the dimension. But, you know. So I'm just going to hold that down, release that guy. So I'm going to sit here and hold this for just a little bit because I do want this to be kind of up and more dimensional. So I'll be back in just a couple minutes once it holds. Well, probably wouldn't take minutes, just seconds, but I'll be back. Like I said, that was probably about 20, 25 seconds. I'm just going to put a ton of glue on the back of this because I'm not sure exactly where it's going to end up. And maybe I'll place this guy here. And you can also use your leaves to help you pop up your flower. As you can see, as I pushed it in, it kind of brought it up. There's some smaller leaves, there's some larger leaves. I think I'm going to use this little guy. You know me, I always want to put things symmetrically, but you know, flowers are flowers. They have lots of fun things going on, so it doesn't have to be super symmetrical. And you don't have to use all the leaves you created. It's so funny going between the <laughs> tweezers, the reverse ones, and then to this. I, I want to do the wrong thing with these guys, because I'm used to having the reverse tweezer in my hand. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to use all the leaves. Maybe. I'm going to have this guy kind of help me pop this guy up. Okay, looks good. And maybe I'll place this one in here. This is here. Yeah, I don't really want to place it in this area. Okay. I'll think about where else I want to place this little guy, and I'll be back. As I'm working on this, I'm like, you know I want to use all of them now. <laughs> Maybe out here a little further to spread it out. That'll look lovely. Okay. And I went back to my reverse tweezers, because I got used to them for placement, so I like that. So pretty. And putting the one flower because of my sentiment with your one of a kind. So what I'm going to do is, um, after this sets up a little bit, I'll just put some dimensional adhesive on the back of my little doily. And just have it stuck down so it'll be a little bit higher up like this. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Um, super fun. Great tool set. I mean, this is... Yeah, I'm, I'm a super fan. I know uh, I was just kind of dabbling in flower forming. Uh, but with something like this, it just makes it a lot easier and fun. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I have the uh, images coming up here. I'll have the links in the description box. Thank you so much, Spellbinders, for sending these items for review. And I will see you all at the next one. Bye now.